Welcome! Today we're going to talk about Jessica Sowards, her new book, The First Time Home Center, and we're going to talk about making a plan. Don't go away. We're going over Jessica's book, The First Time Homesteader, and today we're talking about making a plan. Okay, so in Jessica's book, uh, I want to I want to um, read this quote to you that she has in here, which I I honestly am I just think it's amazing, and she is just. Um, full of knowledge and just having this quote in her book under making a plan just tells me so much about her. So this is a quote by Napoleon Hill. Let me read it to you real quick. You may have heard this before. <laughs> First comes thought, then organization of that thought into ideas and plans, then transformation of those plans into reality. The beginning as you will observe, is in your imagination. So that is why it's so important that we are careful on what we tell ourselves, right? I mean, we are our own worst critic, aren't we? We are the toughest on ourselves than anybody else ever could be. But be very careful on what you feed that mind because the mind, your subconscious is working for you 24-7. But if you are feeding fear, doubt, um, anything like that, you know, saying bad things or thinking bad things about yourself, your subconscious is going to fulfill that for you. Okay. So not to get too deep or anything, but that's the reality. So be very careful um, and intentional on what you tell yourself and what you think, what you actually think about yourself. Subconscious doesn't know right from wrong. It only does what you ask it. So Jessica talks about having a five-year plan. And, and while sometimes um, that may sound like a lot, but just know that when you make a five-year plan, that doesn't mean that everything has to go perfectly to that plan. It just means that you're gonna sit down and you're gonna think about all sorts of things. You're gonna nail down what's important to you and what's important for you to get done in the next five years, okay? Sometimes things will happen and you'll have to push that a little bit, but at least you have a plan. It's down on paper. Once it's down on paper, okay, it's in your, it's in your mind, that subconscious, it's working for you again. There's something about writing things down, not just thinking them, but writing them down that just kind of cements it. It's, it's a commitment to yourself. So, well, let me just share some of the things that I would um, have in this plan. Okay, because I'm coming to you as the backyard homesteader. I'm also 60 years old. And so my idea of what my five year plan is will not be the same as somebody much younger than myself or even 10 years younger than myself. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about hitting the age of 60 where you get busy, right? You need to be very intentional and I can't waste my time on things that I don't have a passion for or that don't get me to my true destiny, whatever that is. And hopefully you know that for yourself. But today we're just talking about your five-year plan in regards to your homestead. <clears throat> okay, so uh, garden, what, uh, you know, you're going to think about garden. You're going to, um, chickens, are you going to have chickens? Canning, do you want a can? Uh, Dutch oven for, for making bread, bone broth worm castings, maybe a worm farm, uh, pickling, eating seasonally. These are all some ideas to help trigger your thoughts on what your five-year plan looks like. Now for me, 
obviously these are the things I pick out because these are the things I can do. Other than the chickens, I'm personally not gonna have chickens. That doesn't mean I don't want them. It's just that it doesn't work for where I'm at in my life right now. Maybe someday I'll have a few. I won't ever have a lot of anything because my season for that has passed. It's kind of sad in a little bit in a, in a way, but because I have a bigger plan that involves young adults um, with mental health challenges and having a facility where we're gonna actually have a homestead, uh, I'll still get to enjoy the fun from the homestead. It just won't be my personal homestead. It'll be many young adults sharing in that, which will actually be even more awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So I jotted down some notes here from Jess's book on what touched me. And I told you that I was gonna share with you uh, what I'm passionate about. Let me just read a quote from you, uh, from her, from Jess. She says, even if you're still in your waiting room, gain skills now and make this time part of your homestead journey, right? We always say we want something and yet, are we really prepared for it? And I learned this probably about three or four years ago. I do a lot of, um, I, I'm just constantly looking to better myself. So I'm constantly, um, just really diving into things that I can do to reach the goals I want because you know we have great intentions we don't always reach them and it's not always easy and so I'm constantly looking how to better myself and how to make sure I reach those things and then you know sometimes we think we want something and then when we really think about it maybe we don't you know we like the idea of it but if you put yourself almost in a movie type environment where you're seeing that play out in your life and what it takes to accomplish that you might change your mind you might decide that well maybe that doesn't make sense for instance um making sourdough bread it's a long process we like the idea of having fresh made sourdough bread right of course we do but do you want it enough to spend the time that it takes to get that result. Only you know that, only I know for me. Okay, so, you know, this is what Jess is talking about, you know, um, just get ready, you know, do the things that you need to do. And one other thing that she has on here is um, live in your current moment. Don't live only in your dreams and get prepared. So in this plan, you need to think of all these things because that's how you're gonna know for sure. You're gonna, you're gonna take all these things that we chatted about, right? Where, you know, whether you want a garden. Now for me, garden is like, that's the whole crust of the homestead. And yet there's other things that I'm gonna be doing as well because they're important to me. I wanna can, I wanna can so badly. Um, preserving, you know, the foods that uh, we, we bring. I, I tend to, when you're doing container gardening or backyard gardening, you don't have massive harvests. You have a bunch of little harvests. So learning how to take those little harvests and make sure that they don't go bad or spoil, that's been my challenge. And so that's something that I'm striving towards learning. But when you're setting your plan, you need to decide of all the things that you see happening in the next five years, which ones are the most important right now? Okay, so obviously gardening is my number. Woo! Oh, ritzy girl. <laughs> um, obviously um, gardening is important. So I have spent the last three years on gardening and perfecting it and you know, I am, um, growing in containers. And so that's a totally different knowledge, a set of knowledge that I need. Um, so I didn't sit down three years ago and write a plan. Okay. It's, it would be so important if you would do that, if you would just write a plan, just it's in our book. Of course it's important. <laughs> But if you write down, then you make sure that you're getting all the things checked off that you want to get done. And so when it comes time, if you're looking to actually build up to an actual homestead, then you're going to be ready. And maybe it happens before five years. Maybe you decide that part of your five-year plan is to have a piece of land in three years. Your journey is going to be so different than mine. You know, maybe you'll learn a little bit about gardening, but you're not going to 
have probably as many plants as I have because this is just this is where I'm always going to grow is in a backyard so I have um, more if you know that in three years you're going to have your own piece of land and so you'll be able to have a larger garden or whatever the case may be then you're going to plan for that and so the steps that you take will then determine on you know what you want and, and maybe maybe you Maybe you aren't ready to even make a plan just quite yet. Maybe you just really want to do some more research. Make that part of the plan and then fill it out later. Like just put something down on paper, get ready and fulfill your dreams of being a homesteader. You obviously want to do something because you're watching this. You care. You, you know Jessica and you care. All right. That's it for today, guys. Um, remember... Gosh, okay, so. Ritzy. Ritzy, come. Come. You bark. So it's uh, only two weeks from now that um, I'm going to be going to Roots and Refuge in South Carolina. I want to get an autographed copy of this book to somebody. But I need you to comment below. I need you to buy this book. I have a link down below. If you buy this book through my link, I'm going to give one person a personally autographed book from Jessica Sowards. Okay? And for those of you who already have your book, just put some questions down in the comments. Tell me what things, okay, for instance, in each episode. So now we're talking about planning and this is all in, this is like the first section after the intro um, in Jess's book is making a plan. So that's chapter one is making a plan. Do you have questions for her about this making a plan? If you do, put them in the comments or if you have questions about anything else at all, whether it's for me or for Jessica, I will answer, I will ask her your unique question tell tell her who it's coming from and get those answered specifically for you sound good okay well ritzy's going crazy over here so i better go um but until next time peace guys bye now ritzy you ready?